Okay, welcome back. So in this lecture, I'm going to discuss about uh, heat equation uh, and Fourier transform method uh, to solve the heat equation. So basically, uh, first let's uh, look at the heat equation here. Sorry, the the uh, Fourier transform here. So it's a very nice, fantastic tool to uh, numerically uh, solve PDEs for mathematical modeling in computational fluid dynamics everywhere. This is a powerful technique and uh, this is very easy to understand uh, so here is the fourier transform uh, it, it, it can be written in in, in different uh, di in different ways uh, so basically what we are looking at if we have a function uh, u of x uh, we multiply this function with the complex exponential uh, integrated from uh, negative uh, infinity to infinity and uh, compare it uh, a wavelength of uh, 2 pi uh, integrate this with respect to x what we get uh, is uh, the, the Fourier transform so the Fourier transform of the function is just solving uh, this integral uh, so notation wise maybe we can uh, traditionally use uh, u hat as a function of k is the Fourier transform of ux or maybe we can write uh, ft short form of Fourier transform of u is uk hat uh, nice thing is that we can uh, invert this back so uh, we can take this Fourier transform uh, uk hat multiply this with the complex exponential but now this time uh, is the conjugate so you see that here is the plus sign here is the minus sign and this time we integrate with respect to k and remember <coughs> uh, when we take Fourier transform we multiply it by 1 by 2 pi this time uh, we don't do that and we recover the function so uh, we can also denote this as Fourier transform inverse or ft inverse of uk hat so <clears throat> what it is saying is that if we have a function u of x we can multiply this with this complex exponential integrate with respect to x transfer uh, this quantity uh, into the Fourier domain uh, we can recover back by taking the inverse Fourier transform. Now, uh, we can apply this nice thing. Uh, I'm not going to explain today uh, how to apply Fourier transform of the derivative rather than I will just illustrate it here uh, without, without uh, derivation. So, suppose we have this <laughs> heat equation and we want to solve this heat equation maybe in a periodic domain or uh, in the infinite domain subject to uh, this this boundary condition okay so uh, we can apply Fourier transform to the left hand side which is uh, a time derivative of u now uh, earlier I have said here that uh, the u is a function of x in, in a heat equation u is a function of x and t so uh, you apply Fourier transform with respect to x okay so since this is a derivative and you can very much you can see that uh, by looking at this uh, integral it is easy to understand that uh, derivative and the integral can be interchanged because uh, here we are integrating with respect to x and differentiating with respect to t is a different variable so <clears throat> we can interchange that so that means uh, the Fourier transform of the left hand side of heat equation is straightforward it is just the Fourier transform of u and it's time derivative now the Fourier transform of the right hand side is little bit tricky but it is nice uh, if I have a second derivative if I take the Fourier transform it is equivalent to multiplying the Fourier transform of the quantity with complex i times the wave number or frequency and it is second derivative so you just multiply by twice if you have third derivative you multiply by thrice so this, this nice thing is that a derivative of the Fourier transform of a derivative is just a multiplication okay so <clears throat> maybe we can uh, we have discussed this in in, in, in uh, other lecture but uh, for now uh, we, we, we consider uh, for, for, for this purpose we look at that way that I have the Fourier transform of second derivative it becomes i times k square and the Fourier transform of u okay so what the point here now is 
to look at the Fourier transform of the entire heat equation. So left hand side is just the derivative of the Fourier mode or UK hat. The right hand side I have the uh, diffusion parameter uh, or maybe viscosity uh, in fluid uh, which is nil and I is the complex uh, the, the, the complex unit so I squared is minus one so I get a minus sign. Uh, so uh, what happens is that uh, the PDE is transformed uh, into an odd E uh, subject to this initial condition. So when this initial condition I have taken that and uh, Fourier transform. Uh, so the initial condition is also in the Fourier domain. Okay. So uh, this equation subject to this initial condition we can solve it analytically because this is just a first derivative so you take the first derivative <coughs> you solve it apply the initial condition you get u k hat equals f hat k times e to the power minus i k square so the main point uh, to emphasize here is uh, to look at uh, this equation and suppose i have nu is fixed t is fixed to some number we can see that if k is small and k is large what is the difference so if k is large uh, that means this term will be small uh, if k is small uh, the, this term will be uh, relatively relatively larger than what it would have been for k is large so k is the frequency so this tells us that high frequency mode will decay quickly so if I have taken the Fourier transform and solved heat equation, what I can see is that uh, the for smaller values of k, uh, the mode will be decaying slower. For higher values of k, uh, the solution will be decaying faster. And this is something very interesting property uh, we will see in, in numerical solution. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching.